Hello everybody. In this video, I'll be discussing the concept of functional analysis or FAR analysis. So the ones who are aware of transfer pricing concepts would uh, agree with me that FAR analysis is one of the foundational analysis for a transfer pricing study or a transfer pricing benchmarking report. So let us see what a functional uh, analysis is. Function, asset, and risk analysis, which is commonly known as FAR analysis. So this is essentially a analysis of the functions performed, the assets employed, and risks undertaken by an enterprise. Now, what does that uh, exactly mean? So uh, it means that uh, in a transfer pricing analysis, we are determining what are the functions, what are the key functions such as manufacturing, trading, distribution that an entity or a service uh, function, what are the functions that an entity is performing? What are the risks which are undertaken by that entity? Risks can be such as foreign exchange risk, credit collection risk, risk of bad debts, et cetera. What are the assets that are uh, employed by a particular entity? The assets can be tangible assets or intangible assets in the course of undertaking that international transaction. What uh, an FAR analysis does it, it helps in the allocation of the activities between the enterprise and the associated entity uh, involved in the transaction so that each entity can be fully characterized. So the end result of a FAR analysis is an entity characterization of each entity, the tested party as well as the associated enterprise. An important point uh, to note is that the FAR analysis should be performed for each of the uh, international transactions including management charges and financial transactions, if any. It should not be performed from the entity as a whole. Uh, so what it essentially means is, suppose a company is into, uh, say, manufacturing as well as trading. And the international transaction that we are testing is import of raw material from an associated enterprise. The raw material is to be used for the manufacturing function. So the FAR analysis will also be performed from the perspective of the import of raw material and not from the whole business of the company as a whole. Now coming to the question why FAR uh, is important. FAR is a foundation of any transfer pricing analysis. It helps us to understand what is the functions, risks, and the assets which are associated with a particular international transaction. In, uh, as a result of determination of the FAR analysis, it helps us to determine what would be the appropriate level of profit which that entity should be earning, what are the comparables that should be used because uh, uh, as you all understand that transfer pricing is all about comparability analysis. So to find out what comparables we should be taking to uh, do a benchmarking analysis, we need to take a step back and first assess what the tested party, tested party is the entity which is, which is entering into the uh, international uh, transactions. So what the tested party is actually doing, what is its business, what are the functions, what are the assets, what are the risks. FAR analysis helps us in the selection of the most appropriate method. So as uh, I have made another video on transfer pricing methods. So there are five major uh, methods that are usually used and prescribed by OECD. There is also a sixth method. For methods, you may refer to that video as well. Then FAR analysis, it helps in the selection of the tested party. It helps in the selection of the profit level indicator. It helps us to determine 
what are the adjustments that uh, we can undertake after determining the comparables, after doing the financial analysis, and if any adjustments are required or not, depending on the uh, differences in the functions or risks which the entities, the tested party, and the comparables are undertaking. Also, FAR analysis is a major documentation or a compliance requirement. In most of the jurisdictions, it is a part of the transfer pricing report or the local file as we commonly call it. Uh, now to summarize a functional analysis, I have just made uh, this diagram. So it essentially, it helps us to understand where and how the value is added. It assists in identification of simpler entities. Uh, so a tested party is the entity which is the simpler of the two entities that is uh, the associated, the two associated enterprises. So a simpler entity is considered as the tested party. So the uh, identification of the functional analysis will help us to determine which entity can be taken as the tested party. Then it is the basis for the economic or the benchmarking analysis. It is a compliance with the documentation requirements in all the jurisdictions. Then it gives us the criteria for the comparability. Now, functional asset and risk analysis, as the name suggests, can be divided into three different steps. First would be step one, which is functions performed. Then comes the uh, risks assumed. Then comes the assets utilized. So coming to the functions performed, essentially uh, the broad functions uh, uh, can be uh, R&D function, procurement function, manufacturing function, sales and distribution services, marketing, warehousing, logistic, customer support, financing. There can be so many uh, functions. So the whole uh, exercise which is to be undertaken in the functions performed is to determine the functions and the key activities of each group entity. Essentially, it uh, identifies the key intercompany transactions and the pricing of these transactions. Now, coming to the risk analysis. Uh, so I can probably give you an example of the functions performed. So for example, a company, uh, like I had taken an example of import of raw material. So if we are doing the functional analysis for the import of raw material, and the person, the entity which is importing the raw material, we are doing the functional analysis for that particular entity. In the functional analysis, an important function would be manufacturing of the finished product. Now coming to the risk analysis. Uh, in simple terms, risk analysis will determine which uh, risk, what kind of risk, what level of risks, an entity is undertaking to perform a particular function. The more complex the functions, the more risks are borne, the higher is the expected return or the expected profit from that particular transaction. And the corollary is also true that simpler the functions and fewer risks which are borne, then lower is the expected return. Now, common risks that are uh, documented or taken uh, into account are market risk, procurement risk, regulatory risk, contractual risk, inventory risk, credit risk, new product development risk, forest, forex risk, etc. Coming to assets utilized, uh, assets utilized can be divided into two parts. Uh, it can be tangible assets or intangible assets. So one needs to identify both the tangible as well as the intangible assets. Um, essentially, the tangible assets you can uh, find from the balance sheet. Even the intangible assets, they are available in the uh, accounts of a company. It is very important to identify uh, which entity has developed 
the intangibles, especially from a transfer pricing perspective, because it can have implications on whether that particular entity is being adequately remunerated or not for its functions of development of intangibles. So there is this concept of them pay. Um, so we, I will make another video on the concept of them pay to discuss this further. Now the assets, uh, common assets, which uh, uh, can be identified uh, under this step are tangible assets, cash, trade, receivables, inventory, property, land, furniture, intangible assets, manufacturing intangibles, or marketing intangibles. Now, how do we conduct a functional asset and risk analysis? So essentially, uh, first we will circulate a written questionnaire to the client. We will have meetings with the client to understand what their business is. We will ask them questions, a lot of questions, and we would expect them to provide a lot of information related to their accounts, related to their business, related to exactly what they are doing with respect to every transaction. We can also do site visits. Uh, uh, we can review all the client documents. We can review their tax and audit files, their financial statements. And on the basis of all of this information, we prepare a FAR analysis for each and every international transaction. Now to summarize, um, FAR analysis, it helps us in the correct entity characterization. It helps us to determine the criteria for comparability, such as the method which has to be selected out of the CUP method, RPM method, or CPM method, TNMA method, or PSM method. It helps us to select the PLI. It helps us to select the tested party. It helps us um, to understand the company, the economic conditions uh, in which the company is operating. It helps us to identify any potential risks. It helps us to determine the key value drivers, or at any other location issues, it helps us to determine whether any kind of adjustments, such as working capital adjustment, risk adjustment, or uh, idle capacity adjustment, or any other adjustments, uh, transfer pricing adjustments are required in our analysis. And an important point is that it is the platform for economic or the benchmarking analysis that we are about to undertake after the preparation of the FAR analysis. So FAR analysis is the foundation of an economic analysis or a benchmarking analysis. I have put a typical uh, FAR analysis uh, table, uh, how we can uh, summarize it in a transfer pricing report. Now coming to the goals of the functional and asset risk analysis, I think I discussed it already in the previous uh, slide. Uh, so it is to identify and understand the intra-group transactions, to identify the significant risks, to ensure that the control transactions are correctly delineated, to enable a choice of the tested party, to form the basis for comparability, to determine any necessary adjustments to the comparables, to select the most appropriate transfer pricing method, to determine the correct profit level indicator, to ensure that the functional risk profile of the tested party is reflected in the chosen comparable. That's it for this video. If you have any uh, queries or comments, do reach out. My, my email ID is uh, provided on the slide. Thank you so much for watching and hope I was able to add some value to your uh, knowledge and uh, do get in touch with me if uh, you want to, uh, you want more information on what is transfer pricing, what is functional uh, asset and risk analysis. Thank you. Bye-bye.